So how much Satan is investing on pushing his narrative shows the importance of words. Hallelujah. And if you look at the global, the, the global expenditure on media industry, media, social media, and all that, is calculated to be around, I'm not sure, I was checking last time, it was around 771 million US dollars. And that is three times our economy. So why is there so much investment? Why is there so much investment in driving the narrative? In the political circles, they say, whoever owns the narrative wins the election. If you are able to own the narrative and get people to believe what you are saying, you win the narrative, you, you win the election. And I was reading about propaganda. They say propaganda is simple. You just say the same things for 21 days. You just tell the same lie for 21 days. It will ultimately become the truth. And when the truth eventually comes, it will become a lie. So, this world has found a way to manipulate the belief system. And they are not just doing it silently, they are vocal about it. Within two years, COVID has dominated the media industry more than any other thing that has ever been in the media. Because the media wanted to drive the narrative. So, you are where you are today because of the words you spoke yesterday. What is your confession? Why is the world spending so much money to change the direction of Times. Remember, every cent that I spoke to you about is meant to change the movement of your time. How will you frame your words? The advertising industry alone, they spend almost similar amount. In the U.S., because they've realized that everybody is moving to the internet, 2019, they spent 109 billion U.S. dollars only on internet advertising. I'm not talking about television in Canada. Internet advertising only. 109 109 US billion US dollars. That's a lot of money. Just to make somebody believe on something. Child of God, this world has been showing us that if you control the tongue, you will drive the direction of the economy and ultimately the lives of people. And everybody, if everybody gets to talk, and speak the same thing. The direction and the trajectory of their lives will point to us what their tongues has been saying all along. Unfortunately, if we can look at the figures of how much the church is spending on driving the trajectory or the narrative in the media space. I'm not going to mention it because it's just a drop in the ocean. Why? Because we don't believe 
at what you are saying need to be known. Why am I sharing you? Why am I sharing this? Today's sermon is speak, act, and manifest your faith. Speak, act, and manifest your faith. The most important word here is the first one. Speak. But you, you cannot speak if you don't know. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ said, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. Meaning, you speak that which is in your heart. In other words, you speak that which you have been feeding yourself. It will ultimately be your narrative. And that which you have been feeding yourself will ultimately be the direction of your life. In Africa, we are known to be a praying continent. There is no any other continent that prays like us. I'm sure the most all-night prayers in average, it is ten, nine out of ten there in Africa. One is somewhere else. But why are we not changing? the direction and the status of our lives. Prayer alone, without you taking charge of your time, is not enough. It's like cooking once a week. It's like cooking once a month and expect to eat the whole month. Many Christians go to church. They say the right things within the church building. Yeah, when they can put it how bless you. How you are always such a good God. Hallelujah. God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. But the moment they walk out of the church, they release every curse, every stumbling word available upon their lives in the name of complaining or being realistic or being factual. When I was Talking to God, asking what is 2022 for, he said, let them change their speech. We are on the decade of the mouth until the speech is changed. Not only in the church, in your houses, in your, in your businesses, in your workplaces, until the speech is changed. The situation will remain as it is. Hallelujah. You know, before I go to the world, Satan specializes in feelings and sight. He knows that if we can see it and if we can feel it, we'll speak it. And Jesus Christ specializes in what? In faith. If we believe it, we should speak it. But many are speaking what they are seeing and feeling than more than what they are believing. Uh, your amen doesn't look like it's in 2022. I keep at the amen last year. I don't want 2021 amen. I want 2022 amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's so fresh. It's that amen is fresh. Fresh from the bakery. Like spa bread. <laughs> Matthew 12, verse 37. We shared this. We shared this um, when we were crossing over our online service. Jesus himself said, By thy ways, Thou shalt be condemned, and by thy way thou shalt be justified. I'm paraphrasing before I get to it. Matthew 12, 37. Do we have it on the screen? Oh, the, the media team is still sleeping. I'm believing God that they will wake up very soon. We love them very much, and when they wake up, we must say good morning to them. Jesus Christ himself said, for by your ways, 
you will be justified and by your ways you will be condemned. Hallelujah. Why? Why? I mean, Jesus Christ, why did you say by my faith I'll be justified? And by my faith I'll be condemned. Let me tell you something. Faith follows the ways. Hallelujah. You cannot speak opposite to your faith and expect your faith to activate you. Your faith follows your ways. The woman with the issue of the blood in Mark 5, 25 to 34, we'll go there later. She first spoke, she said, if I could touch the garment, I'll be made whole. She first spoke and then she acted and manifest the faith. So many of us, you know, this process has been has been derailed. More, more especially by the media. We watch, we look at the TV and speak everything that the TV is telling us and we say back in the name of Jesus, shall not let them to me. But, but your words are already released. They are waiting to manifest. Hallelujah. Let us go back to the Lord. God is my wish of the blood. For by your words, you will be justified. When the police arrest a person, they said everything you say shall be what? Shall be used against you or for you. We were in the court of what? Of law. So in the court of heaven, everything you say justifies or kills or condemns you. And that is beyond the control of God. Did I just say that? Yes. But uh, Bakunzi, God is almighty. He's all-knowing. He can do everything. No. If God is almighty, he's all-knowing. He can do everything. He could have stopped Judas. He respected Judas' will. Because Judas spoke and acted on what he wanted to do. Amen. So if there is something that God does not have power over, it's your will. You didn't hear me. If God does, if there is something that God gave you that he does not have control of, it's your will. Do you know why? When you worship him willingly, it makes your worship beautiful because God did not do it coming out of you wholeheartedly. Are we together? So, justification is a legal term. It's a legal term. We go to Romans 8, 2, it says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. It's also what a legal term. So when we speak condemnation, we are operating on the law of sin and death. And what will follow? Sin and death. What is sin? Ah, but how do you say I'm operating on sin and death because I didn't commit any sin? Let me tell you the original meaning of sin. Being separated from So, when the Bible says, for just as by your words you'll be justified, he's saying, your words, what you say about anything, will approve or disapprove what has been said in heaven concerning you. You know, that's why God gave us the Bible. Say, so, you know what? I know. Ephesians 1 3 says, we are blessed. 
with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Meaning our blessings, our blessings exist already. Meaning our blessings exist already. The Bible didn't say we shall be blessed. He said, the Bible said we are blessed with all, listen to this, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So there are two places where your blessings is. It's in heaven and in Christ. So when you speak, where where are your words going? The, the enemy came to do what? To steal, kill, and what? And destroy. And he came so that we can have life and have it more in abundance. I want to put it to you that when you release words of condemnation, you are activating the killing stealing and destroying. Child of God, it is not your responsibility to define the situation. The definition of your situation is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to open your mouth and speak that says the Lord, irrespective of. Hallelujah. Mark 5, 25, 34. Let us go there. Say, neighbor, my tongue. Just say, age, my tongue. Yeah, just stop it. I said, neighbor, each my tongue. Mark 5, 25 to 34, it reads as follows. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Wow, I know this. When she heard about Jesus, say, neighbor, when she heard about Jesus, as he quoted, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. The qualifying verse 28. For she said, you see, for she said. So, so many are focusing that, oh, you know, I, if I can just touch the helm of his garment, it's good. She did not just touch. Firstly, she knew about Jesus. Number one. She believed in Jesus. Number two. Number three, she spoke what she will get out of the man Jesus. Many in the church know about Jesus claim to believe in Jesus and speak what they will get from Satan. The, your amen is on wheelchair. They will say, uh, my friend, face the truth. The reality of the situation is let me tell you, you don't have this in this. Let me tell you, uh, we, if we, we cannot be because we don't have. You know, but glory be to Jesus because we are born again. Maybe as time goes by, things will be fine. No! That is not how we speak. The woman with the issue of the blood, she ignored, number one, the 12 years experience. Hallelujah. She ignored what? 
She said she ignored the experience. She was in every position to speak about the experience because psychology tells her that any narrative that is pushed for more than 21 days becomes the truth for that person. So we are not talking about 21 months. We are talking about 12 days. She had experience. She knew what she was going through. It has been going on for too long. But when she heard about Jesus, the 12 years became nothing. Her 12 years ceased to exist. The Bible says she lost everything. When she consulted, she grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, what she lost became nothing. I don't know if I'm talking to someone. You know, you know, you know don't focus on what you're experiencing right now. Don't focus on what you have lost in 2021. Don't focus on that which did not happen in 2021. Focus on the man Jesus. Am I talking to someone? Focus on the man Jesus and begin to speak that which will come from him without his knowledge. The Bible says, I love this. She, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touch his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately. The problem stopped. You know, this disease that she was suffering from, I'm not sure, but others who knows better than me says it happens if it's passed on from one generation to the other. It's a generational thing. So if you're somebody be, be, uh, before you suffer from the non-stop problem last, the chances are that you will go through it also. So she was suffering from a generational issue. Besides the 12 years, she had a witch, she had witch, she might have witnessed someone going through the same thing. And she knew that it is coming to an end. It doesn't matter who went through what in your family. I tell you to someone, it doesn't matter. The Bible said, she spoke, she said, what are you saying about this situation? What is your narrative about your current situation? What name is coming up in your situation? Is it the name of the issue of the blood or the name of Jesus? Which name comes most up when you talk about what you are going through? That will make and cause a difference in your life. The, uh, Jesus said, immediately the fortune of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power is gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my food? You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, we, we, we come to this. He is thronged by the crowd. Everybody is touching him. But Jesus is able to feel that special touch. Can I tell you where that special touch is coming from? Your words. For she said, for she said, it is not just a touch. There were others who were touching him. They did not say anything. Okay, let, let, us, let, 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 let us read the Bible. 
and Jesus are on verse 13, Mark 35, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around the crowd and said, who touched me? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? You see the multitude around you, say, who touched me? Many touched him, but they did not say anything. Hallelujah. Don't be in the church where you constantly hear testimonies. You ask yourself, maybe Pastor favors me. He prays for them more. No. The Bible shows that there were those around Jesus Christ. The only difference between the, the only difference between them and her is that for she said. She spoke. She said thank you. And her words made contact with the words that Jesus spoke. Whosoever believes in me. You see, your 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 life is the sum of ways that has been spoken by you or upon you. There was a day I was coming from the mountain. I was driving home. Holy Spirit said, write down everything, every curse that you have ever heard about yourself. Every demeaning word. Write them down. I took a paper, I went to my room. My prayer closet, I wrote them down. One by one. I wrote them down. When I'm done, Holy Spirit said, denounce them. Shall say you are not this. I shall not be useless. I'm not this. I'm not this. By the time I'm done, I was crying. And Holy Spirit said to me, burn the paper. The moment you burn this paper, everywhere spoken against you is gone. Used. The moment that paper bent. I felt different. Because I believed, I said it, and money and acted upon it. Hallelujah. You are seated here. You got difficulties to believe in yourself. Because somebody older than you, when you were young, said things about you. Because they are older, you believe them more than what I'm telling you right now. I want to preach it to you. That the woman with the issue of the blood, for 12 years, she lived with the situation. But there was a time that she decided to say something. A situation stopped. You are the words that you speak. Let me put it to you again. You are the words that you speak. You have the capacity, the authority, and the power to nullify every negative word spoken upon your life. I remember I was young. I think I was 14, 15. I went to visit my aunt. Naughty boys, I took my slingshot, hit the old man's dog. I didn't see her that she was sitting behind the ground. She came out gun blazing. She released every curse under the earth, under the sun. And one of the words that I remember vividly, I'm telling you, you will never have any children. I loved her. I said, me, never. I was young. I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what I was doing by that. I said, me, never. Now when I grew up, I realized that if I did not respond to those words immediately or later on, I was going to be having a, a problem of childbearing 
not know you were his coming. It was somebody that decided to believe the word that he spoke. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Numbers 13. Let's go to Numbers 13. You know the story. Well, numbers is in the Bible, ne? It's Genesis, Leviticus, Exodus, Deuteronomy, and then Numbers. No, Numbers is before Deuteronomy. Numbers 13. Verse 1. I'm not going to go through it. Moses sent, is instructed by God to send spies to spy the, the land of Canaan. They were out. The children of Israel were camping outside Canaan. And the, they were in the city called Kadesh Barnea. You, you read it at home. Ten of the spies came back with an evil report. They said, people of Israel, the promised land is good. The graves are big. Everything that they said about the promised land is there. But there are giants. And we were like grasshoppers unto them. You know, the children of Israel made a golden calf and worship God, the, the, the another God, God didn't kill them. He didn't make them wander for 40 years. The moment they believed the wrong words, God said, this perfect generation, they shall not enter the promised land. They have listened to the wrong report. The words that have been spoken by the ten spies are contrary to what I told the children of Israel. You shall surely possess the land. God did not say there will be no giants. God did not say there will be no difficulties. God did not say it's not possible. He said you shall surely possess the land. Hallelujah. And the majority who believed the ten spies believed them based on experience because they were older. They had the experience of speaking wrong and hearing wrong. So anything that comes that meshes what they have inside. They were ready to receive it. Irrespective of what God has said. Majority rules. But Joshua and Caleb said, no. We acknowledge the giants. We acknowledge their size. We acknowledge everything. We are well able to take over Canaan. We are well able to take the city. God said, only the two of you will see the promised land. The rest, uh, you will help them wander around till they die. So immediately, Joshua and Caleb became the funeral parlor. They are the only ones who are the only ones going to die. They were trust with the responsibility of bearing the hand. Yeah, 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 not my chance, not my chance. Why the ways? The difference between Joshua and Caleb and the ten spies were the words spoken. Tell me, child of God, 
Which report are you going to believe? What are you saying to you? This year, make it your goal to refuse to speak or believe anything that is not in line with the word of God concerning you, irrespective of the situation. But to you to someone, they say this disease is not curable. Yeah, that's what they are seeing. Yeah. By his stripes, I've been healed more than 2,000 years ago. They said, you know, it's a generational disease. No. I am of the generation of Jesus Christ. My lineage is Jesus Christ. I don't care what my forefathers went through. I don't care what my fathers went through. The day I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, new blood started flowing in my veins. And that blood only hear one thing. What Jesus says, as says the Lord, I will speak that which I believe. I will speak that which Jesus says. I don't care what happened 12 years ago. I don't care what happened in my forefathers' time. All that I know is Jesus died on the cross. He took all my iniquities away, which includes my generational curses and everything added to it. I shall speak what the word of God says I am. Hallelujah. We have been praying. When the cards of answers to our prayers start moving, we throw rocks of unbelief. And we start binding and casting demons and say, We are being bewitched. Change your tongue. Yes, the situation is like that. They are giants. Their walls are fortified. They have a big army. But what did God say about them? Hallelujah. You know, majority report is not always right. It can all stand up. Proverbs 12, verse 18 says, there is, there is that speaketh like the pieces of Troy, but the tongue of the wise is held. The tongue of the wise, of the wise is held. I know of people, if they can have a headache, their tongue will say, maybe I've got what? Say it, maybe I've got what? COVID. <laughs> and when a bit, and the wise will say, maybe I'm dehydrated. Because that causes headaches also. Maybe I need to drink a lot of water. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and talk to your say, Father. This tongue of mine needs you to talk to it. I want you to open your mouth and begin to talk. Ask for the grace to speak right. This year is the year of the word. If you can't speak, you won't have what God has in store for you. No matter who makes you angry, better be silent other than condemning 
and closing the doors of your blessings. In the same note, pray and nullify and cancel every word that's known and unknown that has ever been spoken against you. Nullify them. Let's cancel them in the name of Jesus. Let's nullify them. They shall not stand. Every word spoken against your business, every word spoken against your family, every word spoken against your career, every word spoken against your children, I nullify them and cancel them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This year, I am determined to speak that says the Lord over my life. This year, I'm determined to release the words of encouragement to my husband. These words, I'm determined to release the words of encouragement to my wife. Even if I see that my wife is lazy, I will speak her arm to work, work, work. I will increase her workmanship by prayer. I will pray a Proverbs 31 prayer of her life. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Speak, speak to your God. Speak to your God. Speak, speak to your God. It doesn't matter when did you say. God has a purpose for your life. He wants you to speak right. He wants you to speak right. Father, in the name of Jesus. bless you. I worship you, mighty God. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I bless you, Father. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified, Sibarabosha. Veseri kous talibasi teke. Shani mou salibi keiskati. Veseti kam kapousia. Vasieti mou salibi keiskati. Shani mo ko si la de kesa, basi ta de ko si la de kesa ta, shari ko sari de kesa ta, basani ko si la de kesa ta, shoni mo sari bakasi, shati wo wo ko si la de kesa ta. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you believe your prayers, come on, give him praise. If you believe what you have prayed for, come on, give him praise. You shall have what you say. Come on, give him praise. You can talk about that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mark 11, 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. You shall have whatsoever you say. Many a time when we were only seven, I would stand in front of the church I said, I thank God that I'm preaching before the before the thousands. I'm not the one to accumulate the situation. Especially it is contrary to what God has said in his word. Hallelujah. Learn to speak contrary to the purpose and the schemes of the devil. Even upon the one that you know. You know, so 
vous des prophètes, vous êtes tous à oui par sa mort quand il est mort. Elijah, hein? Elijah was becoming a problem in his life. Because whenever they plan, listen to this, whenever they plan, he will hear and notify the Israelites. Words are universal. They were planning not using the language that Elijah understood. You don't understand this. You don't understand this. You know, I can pray for you in Uganda, you will be healed. They were planning using their own language. But as the words reached the spiritual realm, they were interpreted to the men of God. He knew what they were doing. And one of the kings said, they and the kings end up saying to the generals, do we, have, do we have a spy among us? Who's telling, uh, who's taking our news and telling them the Israelites? And one of the generals says, no, there is a man in Israel. It's a prophet Elijah. He knows even what you say in your boat, in your bedroom sleep. Do you know why he knows? Words. Words cannot be stopped by words. Are we together? They cannot be stopped by words. And the Philistine, what did they do? They took the whole army to go and surround the man who was messing up their words. You don't, you don't, you don't understand. Can you see the Navy? Eh? The Navy, the Air Force, the army, surrounding one, one man. What is he doing? Every time we say something, he messes up. You, you, you are not understanding this. You are not understanding this. So every time he says something, he messes up. So we're going to release our whole army. And they surrounded him. Why, why, why are they going to do that? They were trying to protect their words. And he saw them. The servant said, Master, we are in trouble. Elijah said, Don't open his eyes. And he saw chariots of fire surrounding them. Why? why? Why were they there to protect their words? I declare and decree that this year 2022, you shall be that man and that woman who will mess up the words of the enemy. Whatever is planned in secret, you will mess it up in your prayer closet. Why you can't come on somebody? You are not hearing me. I don't know. From this year, you are the one who will mess up the words of the enemy. Why? Because you will be releasing as says the Lord with your mouth. Hallelujah. So what you say, you will be messing up the plans and of the wicked and everything that the enemy has been planning against you, losing his agents, losing his people, whatever they say, I shall be a man and a woman who will say as says the Lord. And whatever that they've planned for the whole week, for the whole month, will collapse just because of one word. Hallelujah. Can, can somebody begin to receive that grace? Open your mouth and just say, Father, I receive this grace. I receive this grace. I'm declaring and decreeing that I'm a destroyer of every evil word, of every evil enchantment, of every curse released against my life, released against my business, released against my marriage. I shall destroy them as someone destroyed the plans of the Philistines. I shall be that man who will stand up and destroy the plans of the enemy against my children, against my family. Who said to me to not do in the mighty name of Jesus? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you believe it, begin to shout to the Lord. If you believe it, begin to shout to the Lord. Begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise. Give him to give him praise. The Bible says, We shall enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We shall enter his gates with praise. Enter his gates. Enter his gates of judgment. I know that I have 